Now, hello, this is Bill Winston. Thank you for sending in your questions to Ask Dr. Winston. Now, all of you are sending in great questions, and I'm glad that I have the opportunity to answer these questions straight from the Word of God. Now, these questions are not to be answered by man's opinion, but we're seeking the Holy Spirit of God, answering them according to the Word of God. So today I'll continue to answer a few more questions. Now, before we get started, let me just say a couple of things that the Bible says over in Romans chapter 16, it says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek for therein is the righteousness God revealed from faith to faith as it is, it, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. I want you to key in on that last part, the just shall live by faith. So you and I, are creatures of faith. We are part of God's family and God has designated us to walk by faith. Now, faith is not a feeling. Now, why faith? Because really without faith, um, it's impossible for you to f defeat the enemy. You're going to have to have faith. Um, even if you pray, the, the Bible said the prayer of faith will save the sick. <laughs> And so this whole idea of having faith is key for us to really defend ourselves against the opposing forces of the enemy. He'll come in and make people feel a certain way or make people doubt whether their marriage is really from God or whatever have you. I'm talking about all these suggestions that the enemy has doing, been doing for years that have been causing all kinds of chaos and problems and failures and so forth. But the way that we defend ourselves is with the shield of faith that we've got to have faith. Satan cannot steal what's covered by faith. So you have to cover yourself by faith. Now, when you're talking about faith, you're talking about the supernatural. So when we talk about the supernatural, the, through faith, Jesus raised the dead. And your marriage may be dead, <laughs> may need raising. Jesus can raise it. <laughs> he showed you that, demonstrated it. How about a storm? He, through faith, he said, when he stopped the storm, he turned to his disciples and said, where's your faith? Now, what am I saying here? It might be a storm in your marriage. He can stop the storm. So my point to you is, if you don't apply faith to it, sometimes this Bible really doesn't do you any good. Because sometimes I have people come in the office or people who ask me for a marriage counseling and come in and he tells his story and tell the, she tells her story. And then I begin to tell the story that the Bible said. <laughs> now God is the one that made us. Am I right about it? He knows what fixes us. <laughs> he said, now, if you draw not to God and resist the devil, he'll flee from you. And in most of these marriages, the devil has gotten in, but the draw not to God means to submit yourself to his word. So I'm not talking about who's right. Let's talk about what's right. And when you put it on that objective basis, many times, most times, it gets fixed. So let's get into the first question. Praise God. All right. He says this. This is the question. It, it, the question is, what should I do when my spouse devalues me as a help meet and is not transparent about finances, business ventures, and other affairs? Well, you can't ever tell about somebody's life. Like I said, most time when people come together, when God brought Adam and Eve together, they were one, they were unique, they were whole, meaning that they came together and the Bible said the Garden of Eden was a time of innocence. That means they didn't have a whole lot of background in their life for somebody, you know, abusing somebody or going to jail and all that. They didn't have all of that in their background. They came together pure and simple. But look how Satan came in on Eve even though they were perfectly made, here comes Satan to tempt Eve and he tempted her. And then Adam, of course, went along with it and that caused the fall of the whole earth. But my point to you is, is that the first thing that God gave Adam and Eve to protect themselves with was knowledge. And I think that is a problem with most marriages. My people are destroyed and I could put marriages in there because of lack of knowledge. It's through knowledge that you can protect yourself. It says, hey, uh, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of that. If you eat of that one, you're going to die. <laughs> you know, that's knowledge. So it's the same thing about us is that we need knowledge. And I think sometimes when men in marriages devalue the woman, it's because they have no knowledge. I mean, you can go to some religions, if you will, and 
they devalue the woman. I mean, the woman had to walk 10 paces behind the man, you know, that kind of thing. Well, I always remind them, first of all, I said, God took this, 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 made this woman out of a rib of this man. That means she came out of his side. So this woman walks by your side, not under your feet. Now, once that woman can find her role as a woman in a marriage and then minister to that man in that role, now she can pray that God will now fix the heart of her husband so that they can flow together in whatever dream or vision or plan that God has for their lives. And I think, first of all, like I said, make sure we're straight. Make sure we go back, study the scriptures, get some books on it, go to a teaching, so forth and so on, and get yourself straight. Once you get straight, you submit to God, then you resist the devil with the prayer, with the word of God, with confession about your husband, and the devil will flee from you. So that's one of the things that I would recommend. Now, understand when people get together today, in this day and time, most people are broken. And they get together thinking the other person is going to make up the difference. Ah, ah, what a surprise. And my point to you is, is that they're broken too. It reminds me of this guy who's talking about two people claimed that they were in love, went on a picnic. <laughs> and they got in the picnic and they put the basket down, put the, you know, picnic uh, cloth down on the, uh, the tablecloth down on the, the ground and put the basket there and they sat down and, and they looked at the basket and he said, um, where's the love? And she said, I thought you brought it. He said, no, I didn't bring the love. I thought you brought it. <laughs> you followed him saying, where's the love in this marriage? Because a love gives. A love is long suffering. A love um, does not, um, a, a love prays for other people. A love puts somebody above themselves. A, a love is not looking for anything back um, for, uh, because they did something for you. Where is the love? And I'm just saying, if you just submit to God, if you just come and do what you're supposed to do and then resist the devil, then he must flee from you. That's not an option. When you do what God says, he will make sure that the devil flees from your marriage. Praise God. All right, let's look at another one. Due to a failed surgery, my husband has morphed into a terrible painkiller addiction. I know I should lean on God to work it out, but I'm frustrated. Counseling and separating have not worked. Is it ever okay to just give up? I wouldn't, I, I don't even like the word give up. <laughs> give up. Can you hear Jesus say, well, just give up. <laughs> you know, I've heard him say, give your life. <laughs> That's what I've heard him say, but not give up. I don't like that word. That word tells me that there's, there's flesh operating in that. And what you got to do is get the flesh out. You got to get the feelings out. You got to get the love back in because love is not a feeling. It's God. Love is God. And when he's in you, he doesn't give up. And that Bible says love never fails. So it won't fail. Now, what your husband needs to get off that addiction is prayer. <laughs> he needs some prayer and ministering to maybe by somebody who understands addictions or whatever have you. Listen to what I saw. I saw a transformation film the other day of a city in Central America, and that city was just burdened with crime. I mean, all over the place. And they had all kinds of um, uh, idols that they worship, so forth and so on. And um, the, the jails were growing. They had four jails, so big, huge jails now for this one time. People were sleeping on the street, addicts, so forth and so on. Now, what happened? Prayer came. One man, God got a hold of him. He began to fast and pray and so forth and so on. They organized people in prayer, turned the whole city around. Guess what? The last jail was closing. Nobody to go to jail. All the lewd places and, and so forth in town closed. They only had three left open. And it was, it was umpteen of them open before. What happened? all the fruit and vegetables, they showed a squash and it was big as a boy's arm. It was huge. He said, this is the size of fruit of going. Why? Because the heavens are open. And when heaven's open, the anointing is there to remove burdens and destroy yokes. The whole town got turned around. Why can't you turn around your marriage? Why can't you take your husband off addiction? Remember, 
Jesus said, all things are possible to those that what? Believe. So one of the things you got to do is believe. Well, you can't believe without studying the word because believing is saying that, hey, I'm trusting in no other source, but I'm trusting in God. And once you trust in God, it commits God to move on your behalf. God can deliver your husband from addiction in one night. I've seen it done. I've seen us baptize people, person been on cocaine for 20 years and so forth, baptized and next thing you know, boom, totally free. No 10 step program, no nothing. I've seen another one. We baptize them and we have them to change in a garment, you know, and baptize them. And <laughs> you know, we had them under the water, but the whiskey bottle just, just rose right up to the top, you know, cause it, it was closed <laughs> and had whiskey still in it. Praise the Lord. He didn't need that bottle any longer. Addictions can be delivered. I'm telling you, this is your time. I believe your season has come. I believe that's why I'm reading yours right over this media right now. Your time has come. Praise God. It's time for your home to be delivered. Now, let's go to the next question. I nor my sisters, brother or son, have ever been married. We all serve God. Why haven't our spiritual mates come forward? What are we not doing? Glory to God. Well, I can say all kinds of things. There's a curse in the family, (laughs) a curse of single people. Praise the Lord. Keep everybody single. No, I don't believe that. I just believe that for some reason there has, however it's happened, there has been just a a culture. There might have been um, a belief system. There might have been a bad experience somewhere. And because of that, some things just worked out the way they had. There might be a way... Uh, We think about people, other people, so forth and so on. I don't know. I don't know. But if you want to get married, (laughs) I just explained on the last uh, media broadcast how that can happen. I talked about Dr. Cho's book. He gives an example of a woman who had been praying for a husband for 10 years, had not a husband. But what happened is Dr. Cho told her how to pray and how to design that particular person that she wants and one through 10, whether she wants him tall, short, whatever she wants him, what racial background, et cetera. And God will bring you the exact man that you want. Guaranteed. You see, here's what he said. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you've received them and you shall have them. Whatsoever. That's a blank check. You fill it in. See, and the tendency is to think God can't do this. Is there anything too hard for God? No. (laughs) He can do it for them. He can do it for you. So all your cousins and everybody else can get married. So don't think that there's something special on your house that everybody, nobody is to be married. I really believe that now it's just a time of focusing on how to pray and get to this uh, uh, ability now to uh, get the process down of what it takes to get a mate uh, in your life. And God will meet you right there. Praise God. As a matter of fact, I pray for you right now. Father, I pray for this sister and all the sisters now that may write me in terms of a mate and the brothers, Lord, I pray for them as well. I pray that you'll give them the person, Lord God, that you have ordained for them from the foundation of the world, that you'll give them a desire for this person, that you'll give them what to say and what to pray. And Lord, I pray that those prayers be answered quickly. And I pray that whatever uh, time they need to go through for that person to be manifested, Lord, they go through it with joy. Now, I thank you for it. I call those mates in right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Praise God. Isn't that better than going somewhere trying to find somebody? (laughs) Glory to God. All right. The next question. My parents are searching for a man for my marriage according to to their wishes, according to culture. I don't want to marry someone out of God's will. How will God show or give me an answer? I have plans and dreams for my future. Oh, it's a lot of mates here (laughs) going on, praise the Lord. Well, that's all right, glory to God. Um, The one thing you need to settle a culture thing, if you will, uh, because there are certain in our church, we have 21 different nationalities (laughs) and um, people sometimes their parents, uh, you know, old school and 
They don't want them to marry outside the culture, so forth and so on. Well, you have to settle that with them. And you have to somehow pray for them that they'll understand that uh, you want uh, God to have the person that he wants you to have. And, and if you think that particular person comes from another culture, whatever have you, that's between you and God. But it's you, God, and that particular mate that are going to have to run with the vision God has given you. And it's not your parents that are going to have to do that. It's going to have to be you. Now, I've seen people go through all kinds of things in terms of marriage outside of their culture. I mean, over in other countries, they have caste systems. And caste means if you were born in the aristocratic or the caste that has a lot of money, then you're not supposed to marry in a lower caste. And I've seen people do that and their parents stop speaking to them, whatever have you. But in time, they got over it. It's amazing how God can smooth things over. So I would say you look for the person that God has placed in your heart and have God to uh, assist you and, and bring that person to you. And uh, you don't have to go out everywhere looking for that person. That's not the idea. The idea is that you let God have his hand and his way in bringing that person to you. I remember when I first married uh, my wife, before I married her, I saw her. Now, the way I saw her, I wasn't looking for a wife at all at that particular time. Matter of fact, I was doing, I was, I was trying to get more business. I was in the computer business and I was with a friend of mine and we were going to his office and I was working for a company called IBM in computers and I was going to his office. He was a manager. I was a manager at that time. And as we were going to his office, I passed by this desk of a person sitting outside his office and they had a, a bay there outside the office, uh, his office with a number of offices of people who worked for him. And she was a systems engineer, a technical person in IBM and computers. And uh, I passed by her and I took a second look. I, I didn't want to stare or anything like that. I was very cool about it. And I walked by and I walked on in his office. I said, who is that? Oh, to God. He said, oh, that's, that's her name's Veronica. She's too religious. You don't want to. Whoa, because I had just gotten saved. You know? So what am I saying? Look how God put that together. I remember one of the things happened is, is, you know, I took her out to, uh, to, to lunch and so forth and met in the cafeteria and so forth. And I told this friend of mine, I said, man, every time I see this lady, something just goes off inside of me. He's, I don't know about he starts speaking in tongues and everything. He said, God is telling me to tell you, don't touch it. I said, oh, okay. All right. And so what happened is I got promoted. I got promoted from Chicago to Minneapolis, Minnesota. And so I got in my new location. I said, okay, this is going to make sure I don't touch it. You know what I mean? I'm moving to another city. Next thing I know, we hooked up, got married 32 years later. Praise God. I'm telling you, see what God did. I wasn't looking. That's number one. Second, I didn't touch it. That's number two. But, but look what God did. You see, God can put it together. Why? He's a supernatural God. He knows how to do this. Praise the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? All right. Let's take the next question. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> I've been married for three years, but my husband has no interest in romance or sex. I have a roommate, not a husband. What do I do about this? Glory to God. Hallelujah. You all got some very good questions here. <laughs> what do I do about this? Well, one, um, first of all, I always go back and check myself and see if there's something I'm not doing. That's the first thing I do. And then I pray, of course, and I pray for my marriage. And I ask God, God, show me what is the difference in my marriage? What's, what's going on with it? And so forth. Because the enemy can talk to people different ways. Why? Because people have different backgrounds. And sometimes people have a background of abuse. They have a background that they've been uh, involved in something sexually that has, has really get, gotten a fear inside of them or some kind of a, a mental block as far as sex is concerned. Um, women sometimes, they can work hard all day long and, and come home and just have no, no desire, no mood for sex and so forth and things like that. Well, in either case, it's a case for the God, for the, for the Lord. And I think that uh, in that particular case, this particular case, I would pray because you have, there's a specific something here that's blocking the way. I would want to know from God, what is it that's blocking the way and what is my role in terms of removing that blockage? What do I do? Now, the last thing I want to do is take the Bible, open it up to, you know, Wives, love your husbands, so forth and so on, and put that on the, 
on the on the dresser there so he can see that scripture. And the next thing I want to do is start nagging him and so forth. Uh-uh. I want to do just the opposite. See, the enemy, he sometimes sets a trap and expects you to fall into it. But what you have to do a lot of times is do what he doesn't expect to be done. And what I do is go to God first and see, Lord, what is this thing? Now, God says there's no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God will, with the temptation, make a way to escape that you and I may be, may be able to bear it. Now, what we said about that is there is no test or trial that you are going through. Let me see how I read it now. I said this, that you will never be, um, fo- uh, pardon me, let me just get to scripture. You will never be faith. You will never face anything you cannot overcome. So I'll take that first and I'll use that to build my faith because I'm never going to face anything I cannot overcome. And these are temptations of the enemy. And you know, once you get born again, remember you become a target. I mean, he, he knows that if you start getting ahead, you could do damage to that kingdom of darkness. So he wants to keep you occupied, wants to get you tied up, wants to keep you strung out and, and worried and, and fretting and frustrated and everything else and broke and so forth. But you got to beat him at his game. And with faith, you can do that. And wisdom, you can do that. So I would seek the wisdom of God. Lord, show me how to break through this thing. Um, I remember when um, um, the president was in office, George Bush Sr., and they had the Desert Storm. I remember what happened was we um, had Desert Storm and, and, and the president didn't know what to do about it. So he called up uh, Billy Graham and called him to the White House and said, you know, I want you to stay here and pray with me so that I'll know what to do about this, this war. And what happened, he prayed for him. Well, whatever he prayed, Billy, uh, 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 the President Bush did something. And when he did that, all of a sudden, the war stopped. Now, what happened with the war? I saw some video of it myself. The enemy was marching to the compound. They had thrown down their weapons and they were in that uh, looked like hundreds of them marching to a compound that they had for all of them and, and marched them to their compound. Now, what happened? They interviewed some of them. And they said they saw something in the sky and it frightened them and made them throw their weapons down. Now, what am I saying about that? That God can put an end to these things if we know how to pray, if we seek it God's way. Because there's no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. God knows that the enemy is going to tempt or test you or try you. And now he's got a solution for you. So what we need is wisdom. It says in James chapter one, if any man likes wisdom, let him ask of God who give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not and it'll be given to you. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. So as you ask, believe you've received it when you ask. I turn the plate over too. When I say that, I mean, maybe fast. You say, I can't really, I don't know how to fast. Well, fast desserts, fast television, fast something and turn that thing over. And just once you enter into the fast, I mean, at the time you enter into it, believe you've received the answer right there. Because the Bible says the wisdom of God, no man can gain or resist. Once you uh, get the wisdom of God, nobody can, can resist that. So what happens is get the wisdom of God on that matter. Let God speak to you about it because that sounds like a specific situation because that, so, that sounds like something in somebody's background. And sometimes people don't reveal that. They won't tell you that. But God will show you things that is those things are key for you entering into the peace in your home. That's what he wants you to do. Praise God. Let's take one more question. Um, there, is there such a thing as incompatibility in a Christian marriage? Does God put together all Christian marriages or can a man choose a godly woman on his own? Well, the Bible says, you know, what God puts together, let no man put asunder. I'm sure you could choose, somebody could choose somebody on their own. But if you look at the Bible and look at Bible examples, and I really, really recommend to you, if you have a situation in your life, in your house, in your marriage, in your body, in your ministry, in your business, whatever have you, there is a living example, I guarantee you, somewhere in that Bible. And he'll show you what they did. And as you read it, you'll get strength and faith and courage and so forth so that you can get out of the situation or get in the situation, whatever you need to do. Now, in this particular case, um, it says that God puts these things together. If you look at the fact that Abraham went and got a wife for Isaac, 
I understand Isaac didn't even see the woman, but once Isaac saw her, he just, he, he began to speak in tongues. Praise the Lord. No, I don't mean that literally, but he, he really, it was the wife that he wanted. Um, and also, uh, look how God led uh, uh, Jacob um, to, um, uh, lead to uh, Rachel and uh, and, and so forth. Or wait, wait a minute. Let me get that right. Praise God. I want to get it right. Rachel and Rebecca, glory to God. Hallelujah. Just one moment now and uh, we can go on with this thing. Praise the Lord. Um, yeah, Rachel. Mm -hmm. Okay. So he led it to Rachel. When he first saw Rachel, whoa, his heart leaped. You know what I'm saying? And I'm just saying, God puts these together. What he does put together, let no man put us under. God never expected for us and never planned for us to have divorce. And when I say that, I mean, he never planned for there to be a divorce in our families. He wants, once we uh, have that covenant broken and it was supposed to be that the woman be a virgin, the man, of course, have not had a woman and they come together and once the hymen is broken uh, on the vagina, once that hymen is broken, Boom, blood flows. What that blood means is a covenant is cut. And once that covenant is cut, it's supposed to be forever. So I'm just saying that those kinds of things, he never did, intended for that to be. But in the New Testament, of course, God had to make, and the Old Testament had to make allowances for divorce because of mankind, because of how man had fallen. And now mankind is trying to struggle to get back up to the place where God wants him. And God is a forgiving God. Of course, he forgives us for the things that, of course, we did that are out of his will. So he give, forgives us. Not only that, he forgets it. He starts us all over again. How about the woman who had been married five times? Notice what he did with her in John chapter four. He made a he made a, 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 an evangelist out of her. So God can take a person who's had a, a very, very spotty background and make an evangelist out of him. Why? Because he forgives and he forgets. But I'm just saying in, in this particular example here where we talk about compatibility, you can have a person that's been in the, in, in the, uh, in the, in the ministry uh, or uh, been born again, and you can take a person who's born again and spirit-filled and a person who's born again and not spirit-filled, and they can kind of be unequally yoked, <laughs> if you will. And, and in other words, they see things two different ways because usually when you get spirit fill, there's a deeper knowledge and a deeper revelation that y you carry. And sometimes those have been uh, rocky um, relationships as well. So what you try to do is in the, in the process of getting to know somebody, you try to check out the compatibility. And that's why you have this, what we call a dating period, not dating period, but engagement period. And you have an engagement period so you can really uh, be able to um, decipher whether or not these two are supposed to come together. Um, if they're not, then you have uh, some other decisions to make. If they are, then get put it together and realize that once you come together, there are things that got to be worked out. You've been living for one. Now you have to learn to live for two. That's a little bit different thing. Now love is involved. Love shares. Love gives. Love puts the other person before you. Love does all these kinds of things and love forgives. Well, praise God, we're out of time again. We appreciate receiving all those questions that you've sent to us. Now, I'll be responding periodically, so keep sending in your questions. And through social media, media use hashtag AskDrWinston. Or on our Facebook page, use Living Word Christian Center. Or on our website, livingwd.org. Thank you so much for submitting your questions. This is Dr. Bill Winston saying, keep walking by faith.